Long pick for Counter Monster banned these exact two picks. Rengar Thresh is the first two bans against, against uh, Dark Passage earlier. And that's not a target ban against them either. It just seems like these two champions have basically caused them issues in scrims and they just removed them. I think it's a lot of the reason we're seeing very, very similar bans constantly. Okay, a champ like Syndra and LeBlanc, I get we know they're just yeah. generically very, very strong. But Laws is like, how much has Kongdu really been able to scout Giants? Like, okay, maybe you saw Mighty Bear solo queue, and to be fair, he's Korean, they're Korean, there's a really good chance they know the guy pretty well at this point, but a lot of it's like, you just take stabs at what's generally being played. Like, oh, Hustlin, he played Zyra last game. We'll ban sure. him, right? Like, that one, you know that one makes sense. You know, that's like, okay, we saw you just play this champion. You did a pretty good job on it. It's annoying yeah. to play against in team fights, and we want to try and secure a strong 2v2 bot lane because you can definitely uh, beat Upset and Hustlin down there. So that makes more sense than the Thresh ban. It just seems like those two picks are just something Kongdu monsters don't want to face. Wow, and the early Lee Sin pick up saying, go ahead, play Rek'Sai, play Ivern if you want to. We don't care about that. Of course, Giants uh, leaving Ivern up this time around. Actually, I think it was, uh, sorry, it was Liquid who had banned yeah. Ivern in the previous game. So now Mighty Bear, it's unbanned against him. Maybe he does bring it out. Nah, he's just gonna wreck Sai. I, I, I don't think Mighty Bear has become like a one-trick Ivern player or something. And I that's don't think like, anyone's a one-trick yeah, Ivern player. That's the thing where he just wants to play it no matter what. Rek Sai is good against Lee Sin anyway, you can, especially in yep. team fights when you can actually kind of block the Lee Sin from yep. jumping in and getting a free insect on someone. So I think Rek Sai would make the most sense here from Giants. Don't have to lock it in now if they want to go for other priority picks. With the Poppy Ban, we can look at something like Nautilus being picked. And uh, very famously, Nautilus is a flex pick for Giants because Hostlin uh, was the guy who kind of very early on played a lot of Nautilus support and he was actually a bit of a one trick right. a few years ago. Uh, so I think it makes a lot of sense that you pick it now and you ban the problem. Yeah. So the thing I found interesting, speaking of tank supports like Nautilus, is even though Courage of the Colossal we know is a very good Keystone Mastery and it's, it's certainly shaped the top lane metagame quite a bit, it hasn't, I feel like, done that much for bot lane. It's made Thresh more common. I think Thresh ubiquitously runs Courage, and that makes him a bit tanker as a champion. But it hasn't really made, like, Alistair and Nautilus extremely strong champs. Yeah. Some of that is Redemption's so good. But even then, like, Zyra remained a top tier champion when she got no health. Yeah, the reason is that Curse of Colossus doesn't necessarily help you, like, destroy lane. Um, and it's really hard to play melee supports against these big range, uh, like, mages, like Karma and Zyra. They can just outpoke you. They can they get the pushing priority. And as we've seen so often in this tournament, diving the bot lane has been like the number one strategy. So yeah. if you play a melee champion that gets pushed on the tower, yeah, you might have a big fast shield in a team fight. But they're killing your AD carry but anyway. They're killing your AD carry right next to you. Yeah, so that's like the problem is just a pure laning phase. It's still very difficult for these melee supports. But if you can get an Alistar, a Braum, a Tom Kench out yeah. of laning phase with Curse of the Colossus, it's super effective in team fights. Look back at what pick ban has been so far with the rise early pickup actually for Giants for Knight in the mid lane. Now we saw that uh, Knight smashed the Cassio rise matchup, being the Cassio P in the previous game up against Golden Blue. Now he's playing the reverse up against Edge, who is, I think, unarguably a better player than Golden yeah. Blue is. So safe uh, to say. Will be a harder matchup for him, but we'll see how well they can go with this one. Looks like you're better off Arxai. And meanwhile, Ezra going to be the pairing in the bot lane with Nautilus remaining a flex to the end. Yeah, so that's why, again, if they do want to flex down the Nautilus, they kind of surrender the bot lane, but they have an AD carry who kind of farm from range. Yeah. Um, picking Rise here actually shows like how Knight very clearly likes the Rise into Cassiopeia matchup because, again, he had the choice of just picking Cassiopeia if he wanted to pick uh -huh. that one against the Rise again. Yeah. But he valued the Rise highly. And a lot of European mid laners back in the playoffs started playing Rise fit a lot, and it was like very early on introduced as like right. a very strong pick. And clearly, Ooh, Knight geez. was one of those guys as well. Yeah, isn't it? Because he, he opted into playing Cassio into Rise. Like, yeah, this is going to be a counter pick for this one. Yep. And now he's like, I'll blind pick Rise, do whatever you want <laughs> with it. Uh, so, you know, interesting just to see how that happened. Either way, Jay's top lane in for Roach. And this might actually happen. I know it's a Ooh, hover. Yeah. I know it's a hover, but they have been practicing, like, Yasuo top in solo queue mainly uh -huh. uh, when you've been watching some of these players. And. It's something you can pick into like squishy matchups, and you have like a knockup from Rek'Sai, a knockup from Nautilus. Yeah, it's not bad. There is probably a chance it just becomes Nautilus top lane, and you pick a, a support instead. Support Yasuo? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, he has exhaust, right? He's a support. Just build a side stone, and that's it. Perfect. I hope he does it. I want to see it. I don't think it's likely. It's not likely, but it's. I wouldn't be surprised, like too surprised, if it actually got locked in, and, and they want to play like this carry top. No. Does change it. Sad face. Well, it is going to be at least support Nautilus for what that's worth, but that doesn't mean too much, of course. Kind of cute how the pick ban worked out. They managed to ban Poppy and then take the other two tanks. Now, granted, there was always the option to grab Maokai at the end. Sad he went for Jace instead. Though. I know. I'm sad about it, too. It
flashes would have liked on, to the, see on the Yasuo in his first international tournament. But sure. uh, we get Maokai instead, and Jace is one of the picks you and me, Freak, we talked about yesterday being like, hey, let's get Jace, let's get Kennen. Mm -hmm. Let's get some of these picks where you can camp top lane against a tank, you can build some armor penetration. Like, I've seen uh, a lot of Korean Jaces go like Black Cleaver into Last Whisper as like just their core build against a pure tank, and they can just destroy that lane really hard and just like dive the tank over and over with the jungler. Right. Kongdu Monster can do exactly that because their bot lane with the Karma Jin it's going to be more than fine 2v2 against Nautilus Ezreal. They're not going to be under any pressure, so Absolutely. they don't necessarily need to like babysit the bot lane. Right. They can actually camp top. They get to camp top. What I also kind of like is that Edge on Cassiopeia, a pretty hard carry sort of mage. Everyone else on her team is a physical damage to their karma. You don't care about, like, yeah, she's yeah. not going to do that much. And so you've got a Lee Sin, a Jace, and a Jin. You have to counter build, which means you're going to see late Visage, late Spectre's Cowls, no Hex Shrinker, and Edge can do a million damage to the Cassiopeia with no one counter building her. Definitely, Maybe the best uh, one rise, but that's about it. Definitely a very interesting pick and ban phase, and I actually like the Jace adaptation from Kongdu Monster. It's a BU3. You can yeah. take that gamble in game one, and if you go off on the Jace, you might force a ban in the next game. Absolutely agree. It's going to be fun to watch for. We'll see what they can do. Pick ban, I think, made sense generally on all sides. Lots of engage tools here. Relying pretty heavily on only two damage dealers, though, is Giants with Knight and Upset. And if Knight gets zoned out, which you know we saw happen to Golden Blue in the previous game, Granted, Knight's better, but if Ryze can't put out damage, there's no damage output. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Summoner's Rift. We are here for Game 1. Of this best of three between Kong, Du, Monster from South Korea, and Giants from Europe. Bot lane party! Ten. Everyone who gets into the first brush first. That was Giants. Cougar but sees one. He sees one. He doesn't see any. They don't actually know there's more members down here. They just know it's like 1v1. Who face checks? Send in the tanks first if you want to do anything. Oh, they're gonna get collapsed on! Cougar does get the Q out in time and no! does land the hit back at the trade. Well, just the one for zero. The crit's gonna come through. Nice flash in by Soul to take one away. But even still, that is advantage. Giants for getting first blood. Hustlin lands the Q. What it goes to Ezreal. That's actually really big. Yeah, it's big because Gugger didn't actually flash. I don't think he, he saw the Mystic shot and actually realized it was gonna hit him. But what a fun start because we, we had like two guys or one guy from each team scouting just standing on the outside, and then four members snuck into the brushes, and they actually didn't know they were there. The Giants thought, okay, it's just a, it's just a support on yep. her own, catch her, and then suddenly four other members show up from Kongdu. What's really big about this is even though the first blood's only 110 gold difference, the break point's really important, because Upset gets to buy a long sword and a potion, and Soul gets to buy 300 gold of potions. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't even want to buy a dagger, really. Gets a biscuit. Ooh, how exciting. And then we have to look at Summoners as well being used. Flash down from Soul on Jin. That opens up for Mighty Bear to path from top side where he's starting now with the red buffs. All the way down for like a level 3, level 4 gank in the bottom lane. And if you're hustling, you can literally flash on the Jin and just bonk him in the head once. And he's not going to move. And then suddenly the gank can actually work. Absolutely, we'll see what they can do here. Overall, one more Summoner used by a Giant. We're going to just kind of keep track of the scoreboard. Still pretty good for them right here. And we actually also see now on the minimap the Jin is moving in to put a ward on Blue Buff because they know, okay, we can't like ward every single gank path from a Rek'Sai because there's so yeah. many options, but we can I ward the it. buff that we think Rek'Sai is going to take and therefore you know, okay, Rek'Sai's on bottom side, you have at least information, and now you don't want to just like perm push the bottom side just yeah. due to the risk of you actually getting ganked. Yeah, let that be a lesson to everyone who plays bot lane, AD carries or supports. Again, around two minutes and change, get a ward into that jungle. Whether you're seeing the Grom or the blue buff, hopefully both. If you get the better ward, you can move to the right a little bit and you can see both those camps. But tracking what's up with that Rek'Sai is a huge, huge deal. And you can do some mind games now as Mighty Bear, where you take the blue buff and then you just walk out like around your blue buff, yeah, close to the mid lane, and then you path down from from the mid lane towards the bottom side if you want to go for that. It's an early handoff. Oh, it's scary. I mean, it makes sense. You know, Rek'Sai doesn't need that blue buff and. Mighty Bear is just going to continue farming. He knew he was spotted by that ward being placed before. And top lane, this time around we can actually look at the matchup. It's not a tank versus tank, it's not super boring. It is in fact a carry on the Jace here. And we will see this Lee Sin visit that lane later on to try and take down the Maokai. 
tracking might have been really well though on the side of Congo yeah, Monster. He's got smite, so there's no real risk of losing the, the Raptors there. It should be okay. But you can see Roach goes in deep for the Trinket Ward. Again, he's not just warding like the gank path, he's warding camps. And it's it's so nice we're seeing this so many times in a row now to kind of anchor the point. Ooh, Goober taking plenty of damage right here. Should be okay, but yeah, has all summoners flashing exhaust both up. Ooh, he's gotta be careful. Hustle tanks the deadly flourish. And the Q goes the wrong way. And that's one of the important things. If you don't see support Nautilus very often, I you steal. just see a uh, punch still away some camps. And this again, what you can do when you track the jungler. They tracked Mighty Bear at the blue buff, then at the wolf camp, then at the Crocs up in the top lane, and opens up for Lee Sin to move in and find him, and op opens up for the lanes to play aggressive because they know where the jungler is. Yeah. But again, if you haven't seen Nautilus support at all, uh, very strong in the l early laning phase because like it's a very tanky, it actually has enough base damage to do something, but yep. falls off super hard later on where you just have no damage and you're just a CC machine and you don't really get tanky enough to like sit in the front line of the team fight. Yeah, it's not really that easy. Yeah, you got courage that helps a little bit, but yeah, in the laning phase, you're practically invincible. You get like 400 health worth of shields from the Keystone and from the W where you, you just cannot trade back on the Nautilus. So he gets to play very aggressively like this and just look for hooks. If it lands on a champion, you just win the trade outright. Yeah, and also because of the extra shield from Courage, it's even harder to break through the W shield of Nautilus. So he actually has that for longer. Right, he's he smacking away with his uh, extra passive damage from that one, which obviously is a good amount of damage in the early game. But that's enough about Nautilus specifically because nothing is happening in that bottom lane. It's really all about tracking Mighty Bear and then watching what Roach can do here on this Jace in the top lane. Good start from him, 40 CS to 21. Yep. And this tower is going to take damage. This Maokai is going to be under siege multiple minutes. And we're just waiting for Lee Sin level 6, and he's going to go top and yep. kill him. He's up 18 CS in actual minion count. Now you can see he's going to probably deny part of this wave as well. So, okay, he lost one himself. But yeah, look at this. 44 to 22, double CS the teleport comes in. You see Edge doesn't want to let Knight get a decent recall, because Knight wants to get tier into... I think part of Catalyst, I don't think he can finish full Catalyst with the amount of money he has right now, but either way, he wants to recall and Edge doesn't let him. Very smart of him. Yeah, what's important, I mean, obviously both members want to get some of the same early items with their extra mana region, but apart from that, you know, this game is looking pretty good early on from on the side of Kongdu monsters, just because they have that top end and because the Jin without Flash didn't get punished. I'm actually a little bit disappointed. Mighty Bear didn't try and sneak around after handing off blue buff and just try and go for that bot lane gank. Yes, it can be a little bit obvious, but the bot lane was actually being pushed by Soul and Gugger down there. Uh, the rest obviously is because Kongu played it well and tracked him at the other camps up in the top side jungle. But I like to see like just like you're trying to sneak around because you know they have a ward somewhere, you're trying to sneak around it and you go for that surprise early gank. But it didn't actually happen and that just means that Kongu Monster are able to kind of win the laning phase. Definitely agree. Punch gets his first recall in. That's going to be the aggressive build of going for the early Caulfield's Warhammer into Boots' speed as well. So really going to be good at ganking. See if he can make that kill happen. Is level six and he's going to be top lane officio. Right now the blue buffs up and Lisa might grab that first. But yeah, I'm expecting it. I just want to see Jay's poke down there. Maokai to like 50% HP, and then it's a very easy gank to execute as the Lee Sin. That's Punch is going to try to fight Rek'Sai in the jungle, enough. actually. Yeah, as long as Punch can track Mighty Bear, he can go for that gank without any risk of really dying. You just fly in as a Lee Sin, you kick the Maokai, and you just kind of like execute him, and you walk out. You don't yeah. stay on the tower for, for much longer than a few seconds. Yep. Fun luck for Punch. He, uh, I guess, kind of timed the recall maybe six seconds too slowly. Wasn't there in time to steal red? Ooh, oh, nice though by Roach. Steals by 70 gold and half a level or so. Beautiful executed there, taking away the big Krug. But yeah, Mighty Bear just constantly attacked by almost everyone on Kongdu Monster at some point in his life already. Oh, this is what happens in part lane trading. You can see there is just no damage being dealt to Hustling, so they try to get damage back on an upset. A little bit dealt there. But it ends up being kind of an equal trade. The okay, uh, Kongu seems to have slightly better items. And now Mighty Bear coming with trying one of these sneaky okay. ganks from behind. Hostin can just flash on this gen if he flash wants to. Be a kill. Flash. Ooh, he tries to predict the flash, can't quite get it. And a nice flash by his soul gets away, but he's still going to take too much damage. Nicely done. Upset actually burns his flash for an unneeded auto attack. But either way, the kill does come through. Three flashes used for three summoners of KDM. I mean, we finally got that gank in the bottom lane we were looking for. We wanted to see it much, much earlier, but now we got it at least. Soul went down on the Jin. Very important that Giants start getting some kills in these lanes here. They really want to get Ezreal 
and rise past these early stages of the game where you're sitting and stacking up tier and you're not really doing that much. I like get them to the mid game point where they have fully stacked tiers and Giants will certainly have very strong mid game team fights also with all these tanks. But they need to do something on the map because they can't do anything top lane due to Jace being so much stronger than the Maokai. Yeah. So bot lane is the correct target. And you, it's kind of a race. How fast can we do something bot lane compared to how fast Conquer Monster can do something top lane? And if you just do nothing and sit back and be passive, then Jace on his own will just take down the top lane yeah. tower. And it's getting worn down for the first few minutes that had damage reduction. Those are, you know, part of those mid to late 2016 changes. So he didn't get as much damage as he would have liked. But either way, it's starting to get worn down now. About 2 percent HP. Blackfish having a miserable time. But it teleports up pretty soon. So it won't be terrible forever. Uh, the big question I have is, can Mighty Bear come into this top lane? Roach can only ward it yeah. so much. And... Okay, so flash the side, but maybe you can make that kill happen. Yeah, it's it's really hard to, to make that kill happen just because your Maokai is so low on HP, and if the enemy jungler is nearby, you just die. You, you instant die in the two v two. So you can't really go for the gank as Mighty Bear. You can just kind of defend the Maokai and try and like let him push out a wave. Conquer Monster as well. After a recall from the bottom, and gets his dragon fight as well. A lot of damage. Hassan will die to maybe one more shot. Summoner heal, anchor toss, and nice Q by Punch. Couldn't be juked away from. Good job of the gank. Two assists. 2-2 two two and kills now. Giant's bot lane, getting caught with the pants down. Happened last game as well, where they engaged a fight without teleport from the top laner, and they actually ended up dying. Return gank that happened, of course, from Team Liquid. This time around, though, it is Kongu Monster picking up the kill. They're in a pretty good position. Gonna get the Black Cleaver, get Last Whisper first to Jace after, and Knight taking damage. He's gonna be one hit from Dad. There's the kill, picked up Edge with the solo kill in the mid lane. Tier and Negatron look beautifully done. And this was a uh, Knight picking the Rise into Cassiopeia matchup. Yeah. He blind, blind picked pick the, the Rise when Cassiopeia was available, took the Rise in first rotation. That is backfiring now from Giants. He's getting Obviously, slaughtered. He's getting destroyed. And the, the last pick, Maokai, as well, when they already sold the Jace, Giants are uh, getting outplayed in these solo lanes very, very, very hard. Yeah, we saw actually in the previous game and when they took on Liquid that Giants was happy to wait on the mid lane pick and give Knight a good matchup to abuse this time around the early rise getting punished. Yeah. What a good stun. It just has to be the stun landing from Edge. If you don't instantly turn around as the rise, you will definitely lose the trade. And just a very easy uh, solo kill from Edge here and a good start from him. from him. He had a great first game today on Syndra. And uh, off to another good start, so... I personally feel like in the last game, and Freak, maybe you disagree, but I felt like Giants individually were better than Team Liquid. Um, and that's why like Knight were able to like, get a big advantage and kind of carry yeah. uh, in, in that game. Or I say Giants, I mean Knight was individually Knight. better than, yes. than what Liquid had to offer. So a game like this now where Knight is now dying solo and the team is not able to really snowball anywhere, mm -hmm. it looks pretty difficult. Mighty Best trying to gank top lane. Well, the flash Q is down. He's in for the mini wave now for the fight. Nice knock up there. Actually, cancels Roach's Q. He's trying to run away, trying to. There's the flash on the wall, and he does get it. But the chase by Flaxish. W's back up. That should be enough to get the kill. Nicely done, and the gank finally comes through. Let's see mid lane instead now. Conga Monster trying to do something. Knight is already backing away. Smart of him, but that turret's gone. That turret is definitely gone, and that's what happens when you. Automagic win these lanes, hustling. Good hook, the knockup lands on a two, good damage. They're gonna go in for punch, and yes, they get that one turned around, but look at that kill, nice crit comes through for Soul. Now, Roach has teleport up when he respawns in seven seconds. Will there be more of a fight? Looks like no, they all disengage, and it's just Edge clearing the wave. Some cool uh, plays happening here. Finally, Giants could actually gank the top lane because the Maokai had just returned with full HP to the lane, and Roach, of course, was pushed all the way to the tower. So they could actually go for that gank, had even some ward to spot a potential Lee Sin, but this is now the engagement after tower's gone down. Hostin is going to try and lock down the Lee Sin, and in the end they trade one for one, and it feels like Giants have to fight their way out of this one, because again, they're yeah. losing these solo lanes so hard right now. This top end tower's taking damage, mid, mid tower's already down. It's going to be a game where Giants will have to team fight their way to a victory. Right, it's interesting. It's basically, you're right, it's five on fives so that they have to come to second, or Mighty Bear has to just gank out of his mind because all the lanes have pressure from Kongu Monster. So, I mean, they're always pushed up, which means I guess they're gankable if he's not being warded. Sure. But because they're all pushed up, they can ward. Yeah. Uh, so, it, you know, it makes it hard, of and, course. And it's really hard for you to get your deep vision, so it's really hard for you to track the jungler, and that's always the thing that. A lot of like solo queue junglers seem to misunderstand. Like when you're getting constantly pushed to your tower, 
uh, and they're like, all right, I'm just gonna go gank your lane because it's so easy. Like, no, you can't just do that because enemy jungler can't be there. You have zero vision of the enemy jungler because you have no wards in the enemy jungle. Look at the minimap right now. There's not even a single ward in the river. Oh, and Flash is in a pretty bad spot against Roach. Taking some damage, and Powered Q nearly takes him out, down to 100 HP. Walking out. Yep. He's fine, he's fine, but look at that river now. There's one giant ward being placed just now in the river. That means zero information on where the enemy jungler is, zero information on where members of Kongo Monster are roaming on the map, and that makes it impossible to play League of Legends. In solo queue, in professional play, mm -hmm. when you don't have any vision in the river or past the river, every decision you make is it's blind, basically. Yep. Or you need the enemy to show first, and that means you're reactive and they're proactive. Yeah. And, and then you're always a few seconds late. And it's just, it becomes impossible to play the game. Unless you're extremely good at guessing. Theoretically, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you always choose right, you don't need vision. But that's like saying I'm all in when you just like, oh, Texas hold them. Okay, I have yep. uh, a two and a seven suited. All in, I'm going to get a flush. Don't worry. Exactly. <laughs> You will end up losing more than you're going to win exactly, if, but if you do that. But that is a pretty appropriate sort of allegory for what's happening here in a game where you have no wards. Is you're, you're all inning with mediocre hands and hoping that you know what the flop's going to be and, and it often isn't what yeah. you want. And you're hoping you surprise the other by being yep. aggressive. And they're like, oh, okay, he's aggressive. Surely something is happening. I'm just going to try and step down. Right. And then actually you get like a kill here and there. But most of the time you get counter ganked, you get roamed on and you end up losing that skirmish, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you just fall even further behind. It's 151 or 52, 3, 4, 5, whatever CS it is in this Cassiopeia now, compared to 108 on night. Like, that's a massive difference, and that's the best member on, on Giants being down. Absolutely. So, let's see what can be done. 3,000 gold difference. Giants definitely holding on better than Dark Passage had in their previous game, but a bigger difference than Giants had when they took the uh, comeback win against Liquid, so... A tough road ahead, but could be doable. Edge waiting in the brush, hoping to knock down Hustle. Nice turnaround does not get stunned, and they've got Knight right here as well. The Flash getting over the wall. More follow through, but it's just Summoners down. And now, uh-oh, Mighty Bear going to get rooted up. Going to take plenty of poison damage as well. Hook's not going to land. Upset, ooh, burns the heal, but here comes the teleport flank. This could be really rough, really fast. Knight trying to get him out. Can't do it with the Realm Warp. And this could be even more kills coming through. Mighty Bear going to flash, but here is Jace. Looks for upset. Finally, a late teleport coming in for Maokai, but it's probably too little too late. Hoping for another fight. Knight goes down. Upset one hit away from dead. Can they take down oh, Roche? They actually can't even do it. The Karma save, well played by Gugger. Flashes. Why even bother teleporting? You've already lost your whole team. Three for zero. Easy fight for Kongu Monster. Yeah, Giants tried to create a pick here on edge, but the problem is the Nautilus ulti obviously is so slow. The animation takes a lot of time before it reaches its target. So Edge just flashed over the wall, said, I'm out of here, boys. And then Giants tried to chase. But in the end, TP in behind them. Multiple members getting caught out. And yes, they got a few members low from the Kongdu Monsters, but no one actually died. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem now for Giants. They were already behind. They tried to create a pick. It backfired. They didn't have proper information of the enemy team. And now you're down 5k gold and two Infernal Drakes. Oh yeah, this is a huge lead right now for Kongdu Monster. So yep, basically, nice turn, but Nautilus ulti is too slow, which means Edge can flash over the wall in time, and now... And Knight never went for the, the Rune Prison. Yeah, it could actually just obviously gone straight, like, Rune, Rune Prison into, like, Nautilus hook and ulti. Getting caught out now, and then TP in behind, and at this point, as you said, like, as a Maokai, just peace out. Like, there's yeah. no point in you joining now. Your team just needs to run away. Upset should have ran away as well before, but Knight is trying to 1v3. But Upset actually tried to come down and like help him first, and then they had to juke the Jace. In the end, they just end up getting caught every single member. And even the Maokai uses TP, dies, and is looking very bad for Giants at the moment. Definitely rough stuff right now. But Kongdu Monster can feel very good about having an extremely convincing uh, first match win over Dark Pass. And now looking pretty wonderful against Giants. Flash has got nowhere to go. Meow Kai. Goodbye. Eight to four. Ooh, the flash kick. Knight suddenly in range of everybody else. And Realm Warp, goodbye. <laughs> Gets the minion anyway. Beautiful. Shoots, tries to hit Knight on the way out. This might be the fight for Giants. All right, looking for the knockup on a Gugger. A lot of burst damage coming through. Mantra Shield gonna get dropped. And now it's up for Punch. A lot of CC. Rune Prince is there. And finally, Giants working their way back into the game. Sadly for them, Baron Nash not available, nor is a Drake. Maybe they get mid outer. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like they should. First mistake, really, from Kongdo Monster in this game here, overextending in the mid lane, but they got top and tower, and now Jason Cassiopeia coming towards the mid lane. 
Giants are pretty low, honestly. 50% HP in some of them. Ow, that afraid of the damage. Who's oh. gonna land though on a roach? That is huge. Rune Prison hits there as well. Mighty Bear's in range. Nice crit comes out from Soul. And Halsey's gonna run out of HP in a three versus five. Look at that. And pick up two kills. And oh, goodbye. Even more are gone. Make that three. Here comes the chance at a quadra kill. Poor Flaxish is alone and throws a sapling and runs away. I guess with 3v4, but either way. They won a 3v4 and got three. They all died, Greek. That's the only thing that really matters in this game here. Giants have been trying to uh, create some aggressive plays, but it's just backfired because, again, you were down already from the laning phase. You were you were just naturally losing in your solo lanes. You didn't have any vision on the map. And then Kongu Monster, as a team, are just too smart and too good at using the advance. Like, yeah. they, they don't make any massive mistakes. And it's been one of the cool things about Conquer Monster as a team always, always been like that fairly smart team. They just didn't have the individual talent, but now again, some of these members have stepped up. New jungler coming in as well, doing really well. And of course, they can match what Giants is doing individually, and then just outsmart them as well. Yeah. Well, this is a solid team right here. Bang. That flash follow is pretty good. If you get the auto attack, Mighty Bear gets away. That's nice and everything. But triple kill, four soul, five, one, and three here on the Jin. Feeling pretty good. Good to see build actually. It's always fun seeing people decide to get on Jin. I think there's probably like six or so different possible yeah. permutations to go for, but uh, Yomu's Infinity Edge I think is actually pretty cool. Um, even though Infinity Edge normally is not full division by itself without more crit, because Jin's fourth auto and fourth ult are guaranteed crits, you don't care what your crit chance is, just your mm -hmm. crit damage, and you get huge bursts out of those shots. Yeah, I actually think this is one of the highest DPS builds you can go for. Like, I always like S3 with Jin as well, just because I like the full arm reduction. Oh yeah, me too. Um, and I can use him and just create a lot of picks and not just for pure damage. And he'll probably get that next once he finishes his Phantom Dance sure. or Static Shiv. Could definitely be uh, an option, but like, because you can, you can say in a game like this, you know, you have Jace, you have Cassie P, you have Lee Sin, like, you didn't need the maximum DPS build or like a, sure. a really high DPS build oh, yeah. from the Jin specifically, but you're also snowballing big time. And a lot of it for AD carries, especially when you talk to like professional AD carries and you're like, so why did exactly you go for this choice here instead of this other choice? When they're both like very close to each other, it's like, oh, I just had X amount of gold when I recalled. Mm -hmm. So I went for BF instead of Ghostblade and yeah. the build that into like SS3 or IH, you know, these kind of different uh, choices. It's very common for ADCs, just, just to piece together items because you just need the stats as desperately as you can. And again, if you have a back time where you can get like complete a hex string or something, like you go for the hex string instead of QSS, right, Free? Yeah, you don't have the same amount of money. Okay, nice juke right there. Knight gets away from the stun, but look at the kiting. Edge pops the ghost, walks away. And Knight not in range yet for the rune prison, just tosses the Q, doesn't get enough damage. Now suddenly punches here, throws out the Q, doesn't decide to kick. Not gonna join the fight. I'm gonna try and run right now. Looking for a bit of damage on the upset, gonna knock himself back, and Roach running, running, running for dear life, and it dies in midair. That was stylish. <laughs> At least you die with style. Yeah. You don't care if you're getting caught in the bottom lane, as long as you die. A beautiful, awesome death. Yeah, John's getting a few uh, picks here, like one of them ended up giving a kill, the other one they forced a flash from edge that can be important in a potential fight, and it does slow down Kong the Monsters a little bit. Still a long way to go for Giants. Like we're gonna have to see like a big team fight win near Baron for them to really come back in this game here. Let's see what they can get for themselves right now. CS numbers actually kind of interesting to look at. You've got a huge farm lead for Mighty Bear, which uh, like you expect Rexai against Lee Sin, you're just gonna have those kind of differences, but every the lane a, a moderate to small lead really for Kongu Monster, as as we've kind of seen this entire game, they've been out laning the stats back it up. It's a 7,000 gold lead. It's well, six and a half, I should say. And she's not moving. He's going to find Mighty Bear. Maybe he doesn't want Mighty Bear. He's waiting for someone else. Baby with the rest of the team. Looking for the root on Hustling. Get him nearly picking off that Nautilus. And one shot will kill him out. Doesn't even get to ult. That's a big deal. Edge kiting does drop, though. That's a pretty big deal. But Flaxish has to flash away right away. And here comes the Lee Sin. Knocked back a whole bunch of damage. Upset trying to hard carry the fight. Knight getting plenty off as well. And this could be a good fight for Giants. But that, ooh, wow. The plant blows up, a nice flash on the Q, can't get the damage, finally trades it around. A quadra kill, no that's a, it is a quadra kill. I believe it's a quadra kill. kill, he got a lot of kills free. Quadra that's kill for thing. Knight, beautifully done. Yeah, Knight tried to flash around to see if he could land that Q skill shot in the end, but just couldn't properly get to the Jin fast enough, but it doesn't matter because Giants are now going even in some of these fights with all the big tanks. Engage is not the greatest from Kongu Monsters, and now Edge on this Cassiopeia is caught. 
in the front line and the tanks here are actually staying alive from Giants and now it's opening up for Offset and Knight to deal problems. Knight hasn't taken any damage in this fight now and he's 1v1 against so Lee St. John's he wants to flash out of both the Sonic Wave and he wants to get into a better position for landing that overload yeah. onto Jin, but just finally EQs the, the Lee Sin and it, and it bounces off. But he had to wait for the E to come back up. Still though, uh, Giants going even in another fight against Double Infernal Drake. Yeah. And multiple kills, but that's the thing, like when you play so many carries, it is expected you're getting ahead in the laning phase. The tanks are still strong in fights. Oh, this is good engage though from Kong the Monsters. Upset taking so much damage. Yeah, it is really worth pointing out. There's two tanks, actually three tanks from Giants, and really no major tank to speak of. Lee Sin, of course, went Warrior in chance, so he's just not that durable. Like he's absorbing a lot of damage as a hook and on the edge. Good knockup, good rune prison. Knight is pretty invincible here, just dueling with punch right now. And Edge running out of HP, still on top of Mighty Bear, chunked out but doesn't die as he gets to escape that fight. And that's two for zero so far. The tanks kind of refusing to die. Finally, one traded back. A big crit comes out from Soul and turns it around for a two on two. Now Flaxish and upset. Oh, they do get the trade kill back in, but punch still in the mix and Soul can crit everybody. And this should be the ace coming through. Well, it would be if it weren't for Mighty Bear escaping, but this one plus one in the team fight for Kongdu Monster. Yeah, in the end, Kongdu managed to win a very scrappy fight again. It's simply because they are heading gold and have so many Infernal Drakes. But it's another team fight where Edge on this Cassiopeia, he's trying to be that big hero with a crazy engage. Like, look at him in the fight here. He's stepping forward, trying to land a good ulti, but he's just too far forward and the tanks won't go down. Knight with some fancy footwork as well. And now this Cassiopeia dies very early and that's a lot of damage being removed, but Jin is going off in this game. 11 kills after this fight here with that Infinity Edge build. Soul is just doing so much damage and he's always been one of the star players on this team. Mm -hmm. Like when you talk to Papa Smithy and I was discussing like Nuclear with him because he's obviously now joined H2K. It was like Soul and Nuclear were the two good AD carries on bad LCK teams. And now obviously for, for Soul here he's on a better team. Still can't do monster, but just a better roster. Yeah, but they uh, won challenger, there. and sometimes that can be enough to really elevate you. Exactly, and some of the players have improved, and of course a little roster change. And Nuclear now joined H2K. Uh, definitely Top four at Worlds. Definite upgrade in terms of uh, your team. So Over Forgiven? How dare you say that about Forgiven? <laughs> Wait, I said it was an upgrade for Nuclear with the team. Oh, sorry. I didn't sorry. say I thought it, Nuclear okay. was an upgrade over Forgiven. I misunderstood you. Maybe I misspoke. I am Danish after all. I, th I think I think you were right, and I, w I misheard you. That's I my fault. I do I'm think sorry to give it a starry to carry, though. I think he's very good. Actually, I actually wonder what he's planning on doing. Punch taking a whole ton of damage. Sorry, I had to non secretary you there because Punch is taking a whole ton of damage. <laughs> he was, he was. Yeah, so Muramana fully completed now for upset. He's got the Ruin King in as well, which of course got buffed not long ago. I believe in 623 or earlier, so. 623, yeah, 8% now. Yep. Definitely is a strong item against some of these uh, yeah. tanks. And Punch actually went Banshee's Veil as his second tank item, so that's not much HP, and of course it's MR, which means it's even easier for Upset to kill him off. And honestly, like, Knight is still the star of the show. He's been doing the big plays for the most part, but Upset is getting a lot of damage in on these team fights. I don't love him going for second life steal on him. I'd rather see um, like a, a Shiv or a Rapid Fire Cannon, honestly, like something yeah, for, he might for a go, DPS build. He might be going VT now instead of actually getting just... Yeah, I, I don't like Blitzer or Scimitar in this, but... A little bit too much sustain from him, definitely, especially because he's getting so much burst damage. So again, it's, it's not even about like him taking a bit of damage from a tank and then sustaining it back up. No, he's actually just going to get one shot yeah. if he gets caught out, so you need to just kind of trust in your own position. Might be a bit of a face check here from Giants. A lot of damage from Uslan. Cannot ult in time again. Second time in a team fight. That's happened to him. They do just barely block out those ultis and not to say it's live, but that means it's 5v4 with low HP for Baron. And then whenever Conquer Monster has been able to like play the map, they've been doing better than Giants. Let's see who's actually appearing. It's just a bait with the Rise ulti. Mighty Bear might have to try and steal this one, but so they're the not letting him in. Played really well by Kongdu Monster. Can Mighty Bear go in for the steal? He's almost out of HP. They're gonna try. No, he gets crit out. There's no chance for that one up. Knight could be dying for this as well. The flash over the wall. They do trade one in. They're gonna get Googer, but this is gonna be a big chase down. Edge is gonna get the damage effort that he needs. Knight is gonna die for this one. Yes, he will. And that is two for five 
plus a Baron. Nicely done, Kongu Monster. Yeah, well played around the Baron specifically. Ended up taking a lot of damage in the back of the Baron pit. Obviously, when so many members are standing behind the Baron, it will keep like shooting these spikes at you. But they just wanted to deny entrance for Mighty Bear. And in the end, he died before he could even come in to try and steal the Baron. Giants pick up a few kills, but again, whenever we have seen like map plays, uh -huh. Kongu Monster has been slightly better than Giants, but in the big 5-on-5 five five team fights, it's actually been very even. Also because Giants have such a big team fighting composition, so good for Kongdo Monster here that can get that Baron, make a play around and catch a few members first. Hostin obviously going down, and we talked about this earlier on in the game. Nautilus outside of laning phase as a support, he's not that big of a tank. Like, yeah. he dies pretty quickly, and 0-7 obviously on Nautilus, and that's one of the problems. If your team is behind and you're playing a tank support, yep. you will die every single fight. And you can see he's even built so unselfishly, right? He went Moby Boots, which I understand. You want to get around the map, fix plays, but he went Redemption second item, which is like 2,000 gold for maybe 300 HP, like something pretty low overall. And it just makes it very easy to kill off. Now looking for the jump on the wall, looking for the chase, the Satchel Plant helping Guga running out of HP. Can they have the hits? They're looking for it. The Lisa kickback buys a bit more time, and no one is dead yet. The hold, the, the jump in, looking to kill off Roach. And that will be a dead Jace. Hasn't done much outside the landing phase, but here comes the re-engage. The Lee Sin jump in, can't quite find it. Punch gets right back out with a whop. Nice little cue from Knight. They've got to disengage. High MR means Ryzen can kill him too easily. Ooh, if that Q landed, he might have been able to kill upset. He really takes down Cougar, who did survive from earlier. Flax is rooted in place. Soul two auto attacks away from killing a champion. Even trade again, though, one for one. Kongu Monster slightly winning out on it. We'll have the Redemption heal coming in now and getting that tower down. Yeah. Rest of Giants, none of them actually went back to base. Oh. Fine for that one. No kickback. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. 25 to 18. Big gold lead of 10,000. And now the mid inhibitor going down. Nicely played Kongu Monster. Again, making good choices. Sieging. They even trading one for one. They still get more. Yeah, knew they could stay around. Had the heal from Redemption. And again, we're just so far ahead of Giants at 15 kills now on this gym. Insanely yeah. fed, he even has the QSS in case anything just managed to CC him. Mm -hmm. It is very hard for Giants to kill him. They can kill the rest of the team, but Sol is just staying so far back in these fights. Yeah. And his positioning has been He's been absolutely flawlessly. great. He is playing super, super well. He's the one really carrying the game now with his, his DPS-focused Jin build. It, the fact that just Roach isn't really getting all that much done. It really does fall down to Soul to do the rest of the damage. And I guess if you're in a game with Roach, he's Geralt of Rivia here, slaying everyone that he can. He's doing a great job of it. I don't think you get the reference. No. Uh, I knew you were trying to say something funny. I was gonna should I fake laugh or something? No, or? it's fine. Um, we're gonna move on because <laughs> it's a fight right now. Oh, this is bad for Mighty Bear, taking a million damage, gets shut down. Another one for Soul. Now Hustle gonna get dropped as well. The slows is still in. Knight is in a dangerous position. Gets kicked out of it. That could be even more damage. They won't even pick down. Roti stays alive, and oh dear, it's all just gone away at this point. Flaxish engages to his own demise. Why even bother? Didn't happen, Freak. It didn't happen. Giants getting caught out again, and now Nearly. Kongdu Monster with all the dragons, the massive goal lead, and the super minions. That's gonna be game one. Almost for certain. 29 to 18 in kills. Upset cannot turn this one around. There is no chance for him. Game one gonna go to Kongdu Monster. It's a best of three. They've got one more win to go, and if they get it, they will move on to face Immortals in the semifinals. Immortals might have to look. Oh, they're gonna go for the dive, and they can't get it. A double kill for Upset. Beautifully done. Patting the KDA. 9, 4, and 10. It's not gonna be enough. There's the game. Kongdu Monster take game one. Yeah, Kongdu Monster definitely outplaying Giants for most of this game. I think it's fair to say. There were some even team fights. 5 on 5s against all the tanks. Edge was uh, trying his hardest to lose some of those fights as well with some very poor positioning. Yeah. But uh, his A to carry, Soul was playing. Uh, near flawlessly in this game. 41,000 damage dealt by yep. the Jin. Next man up was actually upset with 29,000. Yep. So a bit of a difference. But yeah, that Jin doubled the Cassiopeia's damage up 